Hmm, all right. Well, what's up, everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me again. You know, I wanted to spend some time today talking about regulated mods. I always say on YouTube, yeah, I'm a Mac guy. I'm a Mac guy. You know, I love Macs. I love my tube Macs. I like Mac mods. And I do, you know, I love a good Mac mod and I love a good regulated mod almost as much as I love a good Mac mod. In my opinion, regulated mods are really helpful really useful for things like re-wicking, building, glowing your coils, checking your resistance, things like that. Additionally, I love that regulated mods also give you a little bit more consistent of a vape, some consistent power, at least they're supposed to. I've been doing this vape thing just a long damn time and I've had the opportunity to try and test out and fiddle with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different regulated devices. So really today what I want to do is kind of look at some of the regulated devices like maybe in the past that I used to really love but don't really love so much anymore. I want to talk about what's important in a regulated mod for me, what I look for, things that are desirable to me in a regulated mod as well as things that are undesirable to me in a regulated mod. And we might even also talk about some design flaws that have just existed in regulated mods for years and years that we kind of just you know, put up with. So I guess first things first, power. In my opinion, one of the biggest appeals of a big regulated mod, like a big dual battery regulated mod is that adjustable wattage, that power. When you're using a mech mod, any mech mod, you're kind of at the will of the battery. Your battery is slowly going to start dying over the course of its life. So you might have a really dope like 0.15 ohm, uh, you know, Fralian build inside of your RDA and you might throw that on a brand new 21700 battery and get a really great vape out of it. But every single time you press that button afterwards, your power is going to be less and less and less and less. It's a gradual decline of battery life and a gradual decline of power. Might as well come out of the gate talking about one of my favorite regulated mods of the year. This is the Vapor SO Gen. And I'm running this gear RDA on here right now. And I like it at about 3.75 volts. And this Vapor SO Gen is going to give me that 3.75 volts throughout the life of the battery until the batteries can no longer keep up. And then it gives you a little warning. It says, hey, you, you know, your batteries are dead. Charge your battery. Regulated mods in general that kind of let you adjust the voltage and adjust the wattage are just going to be always, always more versatile than a mech. With mech mods, you kind of have to rely on your resistance to get you the vape you want. And on a regulated mod, you can adjust the wattage or voltage to get you to the, to the vape you want. Is that too much? Is that too confusing? So the Vapor SO Gen, already mentioned it, love it. I never did a full review for this, but it has become basically my favorite regulated mod, I don't know, of, of the last year. It, easily of the last six months, maybe longer. Durability. Durability. There's a few companies in the vape industry that have regulated mods out on the market that specifically cater to this type of person looking for a very durable, durable mod. The first one that comes to mind, obviously, is like the Geek Vape Aegis or Aegis, those mods, and maybe even throw the Hexome in there, are just built to be overly very, very durable mods. And then kind of everything else on the market underneath that is like, it's a it's a scale, right? It's a scale of durability. I found the Vapor SO Gen to be real nice, real durable. When I drop it, the door does come off, the batteries do come out, it's a little bit of a yard sale, but nothing's broken. And something like the Odin from Vaping Bogan, very durable durable as well, nice metal construction. And I love both of these regulated mods. I also like the Inokin Proton Kit, but is the Inokin Proton Kit durable in any way? No. N not even a little. It'll probably survive some drops, but it's not built for durability. <laughs> Gripes. Gripes. So obviously not all regulated mods are created equal. Some of them are made of cheaper, flimsier materials. Some have just weird design elements that will annoy you over time. They might not annoy you at first, but they might annoy you over time. That's what we're gonna be talking about right now. And the first obnoxious thing in regulated mods is this particular door design right here, the little flap. 
the little clippy flap thing. This is the Augvate V200. Truly and honestly, one of my favorite regulated mods of all time. I liked it so much when I was in Nashville, Tennessee, I bought another one just because I like it so much. I was using it so much. I figured, well, let's have a second one. This was my daily driving in the car with a sub ohm tank regulated mod that I love, love, loved. Love, 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 love. And then this stupid door just started getting loose and weak. My batteries were constantly falling out. It doesn't even take much force to like, boop, it just falls open. And it came to a point where I'm driving in my car and literally every time I set it down, the little battery door becomes like unhinged and I didn't hear it or see it or feel it or anything. And then I'll reach for my cup holder and I'll pick it up and the door will just be open. The batteries just fall out and then I'm mad. This stupid design is keeping me from using one of my favorite regular regulated mods of all time. Haven't had that issue with the Bogan Odin uh, yet. It seems to be built a little bit better and click in actually a little bit more secure. So this next gripe isn't something that I can really uh, show you in any capacity. It's that pause. It's that hesitation between when you hit the button and when it actually fires. Regulated mods in the past have been really, really guilty of this. They've kind of phased it out. Not, It doesn't happen so much often anymore, but it still does happen for a very long time. And look, this for my buddy James, Jan, I love you, I miss you, I don't want you to take this personally. The Wake Mod Co, the Bigfoot kits, plastic door, not super meant for durability. It does have a very, very clicky button, which I love, but it also has that hesitation in it. You press the button and it's just a, 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 a split second, like that split second of hesitation before the device fires. It used to happen a lot on old V-God mods. It's happened most recently to me on this Bigfoot kit. Another big, big, offender in that hesitation department. Yeah, I'm surprised too. It's the USV arc. I put this on YouTube all the time. I hand check this on social media all the time. I really truly like this device, but it has that fucking pause. Not only does it have the pause, but sometimes it just completely misfires. I'll press the button and nothing will happen. It will always fire the second time I press the button, but it has got completely insanely annoying constantly having this device misfire no matter how no matter how much i like it which i do i really like it but it just misfires and it's one of those things that's keeping me from using one of my favorite regulated devices and look i don't want to completely drag this usb arc through the mud but one other thing that happens to me that is really super hyper annoying is if i have a dripper on here you always carry around your mod and your bottle of liquid right together usually in one hand or, or at least i do and because of the way the button is placed on the back of this mod, I end up holding my mod and my battery like this, and any tiny little squeeze, yeah, it's gonna fire it. It just keeps firing it. Every time I would grab this, it like fires for a second, and you go, shit. So lastly, running the risk of making a long video even longer, I wanna talk about some things that I look for in a regulated mod. When I'm looking for a regulated mod, what do I want? What do I like? Obviously, we've talked about power. We've talked about durability. Another one that falls in there is form factor. One of the reasons I love the Vaporesso Gen so much is just the way it fits in my hand and feels when I'm handling it. It's very comfortable. It's got this sort of soft touch textured finish on it. I like to hit the button with my finger, so it's perfect placement right there. Form factor was a big reason why I loved this original Augvate V200, because I could hold it like this. The button was right here. Button's right there. You can just kind of hold it almost like you would hold the clutch mech mod in your hand form factor. It has to be comfortable in my hand if I'm going to keep using it. It also has to have a clicky button. Literally all of the regulated mods that I have ever used or loved in my collection have all had a clicky button. It's just, for me, I, I cannot not have a clicky button. Truly and honestly, one of the few regulated mods that has not let me down in like the last year is this dumb little V-Zone E-Mask. This was just from some weird no-name company that I never heard of. I saw Matt Cully do a review and he really liked it liked it, so I instantly wanted to seek one out right away. First and foremost, it's powerful, two 18650 batteries. I never really find myself much above 100 watts, 
but I do like a little bit of power. More importantly, I like the consistency. Feels pretty durable. Overall, haven't had any real huge yard sale moments with this. It's ergonomic. It fits in my hand so well. There's like this little slight, I don't know if you can see that. There's like a little bit of like a contour to it. Not really, can't really see that. This side lights up. It's really comfortable in the hand. It's got a really big button. I can hit it with my finger. It's very slightly clicky. And honestly, it's just an overall really, really reliable regulated mod. So yeah, regulated mods. Love them, hate them, need them. I love them and I hate them and I need them. And let's make a long video even longer. Lastly, there are some regulated mods that I'm just gonna use and I'm gonna enjoy, even though objectively they're kind of obnoxious and objectively kind of a pain in the ass. As you saw in that Kali V2 video, this is one of those regulated mods. This is a kind of a one of a kind, solid, Solid brass BMI touch dual 18650 regulated mod. I love this mod. It's big, it's cumbersome, it's not ergonomic, it's clunky, it's pointy, it's heavy. I just keep using it. So yeah, there you go. There's a world of great regulated mods out there. I think that a regulated mod, a good regulated mod, should be a staple in everyone's vape arsenal. Just the amount of versatility a regulated mod gives you, I feel is really worth it to, to have in your lineup. Anyway, that's what I got for today. No links are allowed in the description because of YouTube. So you're gonna have to use your Google Foo if you wanna find anything interesting. Don't forget, leave the comment down below. What's your favorite regulated mod? Or your least favorite regulated mod or your fucking medium favorite regulated mod. Thank you so much for watching everybody. That's what I got for today. And as always, yeah, let's keep on vaping. <laughs>